Hey guys, welcome to the Pulling Curls podcast. Today on episode 139, we're talking about a hot topic on the tickety talk. We're talking about if you can refuse cervical exams. Let's untangle it. I'm Hillary Erickson, the curly head behind the Pulling Curls podcast, where we untangle pregnancy, parenting, home, and even travel. We know there's no right answer for every family, but hopefully we can spark some ideas that will work for yours. Life's tangled, just like my hair. Okay, before we get started, leave a review. I am giving you like the actual information, not like all the controversy on TikTok. So just leave a review in support of actual information. Thank you. Today's guest is my friend Chantel. We used to work together at the same hospital. She is an excellent nurse and honestly one of the kindest nurses that I've ever seen practicing. So I thought she was a great choice for this episode because she will bend over backwards to give you the labor that you want. I've seen it time and time again. Do you feel prepared for your delivery? In just three short hours, you can be prepared for the confident, collaborative delivery you want. You'll know what to expect and how to talk with your healthcare team. And there are no boring lessons in this class. I'll use humor, stories from my 20 years in the delivery room to engage both of you. I love how Alyssa told me that she found herself laughing at things that used to sound scary. Most of all, you guys are going to be on the same page from bump to bassinet. Join the online prenatal class for couples today. You can save 15% with coupon code UNTANGLED. You can find the link in the show notes. Hey, Chantel, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, Hillary, how are you? I'm so good. Good. This is such a hot topic on the tickety talk. It really is. Which is funny because it was not a hot topic as a labor nurse. <laughs> no, I mean, I know no one likes to have their cervix checked, but I'm surprised it's gone this far on TikTok. Yeah, but I mean, I really... So everyone that's listening, like you need to take a step back and realize that TikTok is not real life. <laughs> uh, um, isn't it? I thought it was. <laughs> the things that people go crazy about on there, I'm just like, I don't get it. I do not get it, but whatever. <laughs> no, I, I really, I do agree. Yeah, like, it's funny how much gets out there on certain topics when I'm like, that's not the most important thing to worry about. Right. And before we get started, I want to say that Chantel and I 100% understand that this could be a huge issue for people. And we're not saying that it, we're not like minimizing you or that you don't want to have a vaginal exam or you've had a history of abuse or anything like that. We're just saying what's most practical and safest for you in the hospital. That's what we're talking about today. Right? Correct. Yes. Yes. Always about safety. And we're very understanding people. We get it. There are going to be circumstances where you don't need to be checked. Yeah. And there are going to be some where you do need to be checked. And there, I've had patients that have asked me every hour, can you check me again? Can you check me again? And once your water, like before your water's broken, I'm like, fine, whatever. But after your water's broken, we don't want to check you that frequently. And I'd be like, can we go two hours maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that or until I you start having more pain or yeah. your baby is showing me signs on the strip that something's changing. Yeah. Those sort of things. Yeah. It definitely goes all, all different ways. Some people want it to be checked frequently. Some people don't, which is fine. That's how it works. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, cervical exam, let's say for like, what is it for? Because I think a lot of people probably have no idea. We're just like sticking our hand up there and into a nebulous spot for them because probably other people haven't stuck their hand in that spot themselves. Or if they did, it really is a nebulous spot. <laughs> yeah. It can be very hard to find sometime. I'm always impressed when people try to say, I think I was this. I don't know. Have you ever had anyone try to check their own cervix before they've come in? No. Did you... Oh, you weren't checking cervixes when you had your last baby. No, I didn't check my own either. I didn't check mine. It's, no. it's so hard Yeah, because you can't bend over that baby like you could normally. I will say that I have an IUD now and I do make sure that it's in place. Oh, no more babies for Hillary? No. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing to make sure it's in place. Yeah. But no, I've had patients come in and say they've tried to check themselves and tell me what they are. And I'm like, um... Wow, it's impressive. But yeah, it is one of the main skills for a new labor nurse. It's very difficult, first off, to even find the cervix in a lot of patients mm -hmm. <laughs> and then to figure out what number each one is. And then I will say that it just becomes ingrained. Like you're just like, that's a five. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes. So, <laughs> and if I think if somebody asked me to put my fingers at like what a five is, I'd kind of be like, I don't know. 
but I know it when I'm in there. Yeah, I, it is true. Sometimes I'll have to get, we have little circles at work that we can show the patient, well, it's this. And when I put my fingers there, I'm like, yep, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. So it is it definitely gets ingrained in you, but it's a hard skill to pick up when you are learning. And other nurses do not have the skill. So don't go to your med surge nurse friend down the street and ask him to check your cervix. They'll just get wide-eyed and be like, nope. It's just a hot mess down there. That's what it is. <laughs> they don't want down there. No, they okay, don't. Okay, so it can tell you like how dilated you are. I mean, that's what most people think of is how open their cervix is. But there's more that it's telling us beyond just that. And I think a lot of people think it's just a number, but as a really educated, good provider, you learn so much from a vaginal exam beyond just that number. And you can't really like say it all. Like at the nurse's station, we'll kind of be like, I don't know. It just felt really wonky in there. Yes. And by wonky, like soft, hard, how thick the cervix was, all those things make a big difference in how your labor can progress or what we're going to do to help the patient to help you have your baby. So yeah, so there's a lot that we learn from an exam that you guys, we don't really verbalize or talk about it beyond just the number that you guys are all just looking for a number. Right. Right. Yep. Lots of things we're looking for. Even. And a big thing is how it changes. Correct. Yes. That's the most important thing is it changing our interventions working. You know? Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, even if we're changing shifts, I'll have the previous nurse check the cervix because sometimes there are really subtle differences that you can only tell if you were the person who checked last, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes total sense. I mean, even the station of the baby, I know for you, I'll, like you said, I'll have a nurse come check after me or have that same nurse that's leaving check because sometimes just a little change in the baby's head coming down can be a change that we want to know about. Yes. And so station is how high or low the baby is in the pelvis. And again, we just give a number, but that number really differs. <laughs> I feel yes. like in a lot of people. And so it's really nice to have that nurse be like, no, that baby really came down. And we, when we say really came down, we really are talking like a centimeter, but we're like, yeah, woo, it came down. Yes, it is. We celebrate very small changes yes. in labor. It's awesome. The other thing it can tell us is the baby's presenting part right? If it's a head, if it's a hand, if it's a cord, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, different kinds of things. Because as nurses, we are not, well, some nurses are, but most nurses are not trained to do an ultrasound. So officially, the only way we can say that it's a head is either get an ultrasound by a doctor or an ultrasound tech or check and be like, well, that's not a bottom, that's a head. So yep, that's a nice hard head. That's what yeah. we're looking for. Yeah. So just so you guys know, there's so much that we're learning from this. It's not just one thing. Correct. There's a lot of reasons that we are checking that cervix. Yeah. But there are a lot of times that you can say no to having your cervix checked. Uh, I would say some hospitals want to check people every hour, which like our hospital doesn't want us to check every hour. Like they didn't care. Some doctors did. Mm -hmm. But some hospitals, that's their routine policy. And if it's just a policy rather than something they're seeing on the baby, you can 100% be like, no. It is true. Yeah, there's, I would say overall, most of us nurses were, uh, where I work, they're, they're really reducing the amount that they're checking. But we do, there are certain times that you do just have to check more often than not. It's hard to explain to people. Like, yeah. There's a lot of things influencing how often or how little we check. Yeah. And so definitely what you want to do is first off, if you really want to limit the exams, especially if you have a reason that you're willing to share, share that with your hospital team. Because if somebody came to me and was like, I have a history of sexual abuse, I really do not want to be checked frequently. I'm 100% going to take that into consideration every time I check. And I'm going to tell the next nurse that and report, like, I'm going to be like, let's be really cautious of this. Yes, definitely. And I know in, we've had a couple circumstances where that's happened. And really, I remember the doctor only came in and checked just to limit the amount of times we were checking. So we, we can make changes to the plan based off of what the patient tells us. And we definitely need them to tell us what's going on or why they don't don't want exams. Yes. Whereas if you just, if you came in and you were just like, I saw on TikTok, I won't need any exams. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Then we're like, well, you're misinformed. <laughs>
then we're just going to have an eye roll as we're doing our seven hours of charting. And, and, um, we want to know your actual reasons for things. Yes. And I think we're very understanding for the most part, and we want to be there and we want you to have the labor that you want, but we kind of need to know your reasons. Just like we explain our reasons for what we do to the patient as well. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. Okay. So the main time I really don't think you can avoid it is if you're just coming in and you think you're in labor, really? I mean, I, I think maybe if you had pre-prepared it with your doctor and you had a history and everybody was on board and they had it on your prenatal, which would be a lot of rigmarole, we could probably avoid it. But otherwise, we really just need to see if your cervix is opening. Correct. Yeah. If you're walking in telling us you're in labor, we've got to start with some sort of a baseline. Unless your baby's head's right there, then then we know. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if we can see the scalp, we're good to go. We're yeah. good. But. Yeah. So things you can do is try and labor longer at home so that you know you're in labor. You know, if we check you and you're like four or five, we're not going to have to check you again. Whereas if we check you and you're one, we probably are going to send you on a little walk and then check you again in a little bit to see if your cervix is opening. Yep. Correct. That's how it rolls when you come in. <laughs> and so that's the main time that I'm like, oh, that would be really difficult to avoid. Also, we don't want you to push until your cervix is completely gone. So usually somebody's just going to make sure because everyone says on TikTok that you'll know because you'll have the urge to push. But there's lots of patients who have the urge to push at eight centimeters that would not be awesome if they did start pushing. No, I'd say unless you have an epidural, when you're seven, eight, nine centimeters, you want to push and it's hard not to. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, like like you said, really bad if you start pushing against a cervix. Yeah, just so you guys know, you can skip this if you don't want to hear about it, but you can tear your cervix if you push. You can also make it swell and then that would delay even your labor. Like there's there's a reason that we want to make sure it's out of the way before you start pushing. Yeah, especially with your first baby. Yeah. Other times I think you might need it is if you're getting an induction, like if you're asking for an induction or they think you need an induction, they might check you in the office because we need to know what your cervix is to pick which medication we need to induce you with. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I will say I think people could probably skip that 36 week. I mean, I talked to a few of the doctors at work and they said they're starting to get away from that first 36 week cervical exam. So that would be one that I could totally support skipping. But if you're come, yeah, if your plan's an induction, your doctor kind of needs to check you in the office before they send you straight to us. So we know what we're starting out with. Yeah. Although a lot of people really like to know at 36 weeks and they're like, my pants are already off because you have to get the GBS swab. Although I've heard some doctors just handing uh, patients the swab and tell them to go do it in the bathroom. So that's kind of cool. Although I, I don't know that you'd get it in the right spots. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. What I don't know if I would want to, to do my own. Yeah. I'm trying to picture that. No thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm paying you for, doctor. <laughs> exactly. But you are right. I think most people just want to know. We're kind of tired of being pregnant at that point. And it's like, am I getting anywhere? So most people do want to know. But yeah. for those that don't, I could totally see skipping that exam. Honestly, any exams, because really it doesn't tell you anything. Even if you're two centimeters at 36 weeks, that do, you could still be two centimeters at 41 weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, sadly can walk around with that for a long time. Yeah. And then the other time I think it's necessary is sometimes we see things on the fetal heart rate strip that make us want to check the cervix just to make sure there isn't something in the way or the head's not right there or there's just things that we need to do. <laughs> yes, there are things we need to do based off of what the baby's telling us. Yeah, it's just hard. Okay, so Chantel and I have been talking about this line that they talk about that goes up between your bum cheeks that supposedly is supposed to tell you if you're dilated. And I was like, Chantel, ask everybody at work. Had anybody heard of it or ever even seen it? So... One person was like, yeah, that doesn't work. No one hears about that thing because it does not work. And so, yeah, I, everyone thought I was crazy at first. Like, what purple line are you talking about? You know, and I'm like, oh, just when I'm reading off TikTok, they can say that there's a purple line that it goes away as you dilate. And no, yeah, it's definitely not something that is, has been taught to us at work. And it's not something that we use. And the studies kind of say it's very unreliable. Yeah, it might work in a couple people, but how do you know, you know, how do you know that it's actually working if it's not working in a good percentage of the population, really? Plus, I was trying to decide if I would rather have them check between my bum cheeks or just check my cervix. I know. I think it was you I joked with. It takes on spreading the cheeks. Yeah. So. 
gives it a whole new meaning. And I no, thank you. Yeah. And obviously, if you're a woman of color, then it would be even more difficult to see. Uh, yeah. I mean, you'd need a very bright light to see that. So it's just putting a spotlight in an area that I don't want a spotlight shown down there on me. Yeah. I've seen other people say, oh, you can just check the baby's engagement with Leopold's maneuvers. But I mean, some people really start with that baby low. Some people, it's hard to check Leopold's maneuvers if you're overweight like me. Yeah. I don't think it's a great indicator of how far along or if you're in active labor, all those kind of different things. Yeah, I know I would get it wrong. If I was to rely on that, I would be wrong. Yeah, and it's just not how we're trained because essentially they find that a cervical exam is the best way to know. It'd be like walking into the ER and just saying, I think my bone's broken, but I will not have an x-ray. Yeah, exactly. It's a very good analogy. And then we're kind of like, I mean, you can feel the bone, but you you just can't know and you don't really know how to fix it until you have an x-ray. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, yeah. Unless it's really offset. But then again, that would be comparable to, oh, your baby's head's coming out. I think you're complete. <laughs> right. I should call your doctor. <laughs> yeah. I should call. <laughs> and put some gloves on. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Chantel, do you have any good tips on, because nobody thinks they're fun, but I will say that after my first baby, they got much more tolerable. Do you have any tips for people who can't stand exams? You know, my advice, I know it's always lame, but I do think the more you try to just relax, the easier it is on you. I mean, the first thing we all want to do is tense up, but really if you relax, it's better. Tell your provider, you know, you're going too fast, slow down and, you know, tell your the person checking you to be very open, like, okay, I'm going, I'm going to start now, or I'm, I've almost got it, or it's kind of high. Um, tricks that they could know that the patient can know as well are what we use, you know, sometimes a bedpan sitting on a bedpan can help. And so, you know, if you're, you can tell the nurse or the doctor's having a hard time, ask them for that, or ask them if you can put your hand underneath your bum to raise that pelvis so that it's easier for them. Yeah, that's a trick. And I don't know what they do in the doctor's office because I didn't know that trick before I already had a second baby and it was easier to check. But you can always just make fists, put them under your bum and kind of raise your pelvis up that way. And it can make your cervix easier for them to find. And I totally agree that relaxing makes all the difference. I know that the first hospital I worked at, they called it the chandelier reflex because people's pelvis would go up in the air when they were trying to get an exam, which makes it even worse because then you're contracting all those muscles. And yeah, Mm -hmm. I know it's hard and definitely it's not fun, but that's my best advice try to relax, you know, put some music in your ears or have your partner distract you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Squeeze their hand back. And I really like the advice to talk to the provider and be like, you know, what is it that bothers you? Is it the cold jelly? Tell them to let you know before they touch or, you know, exactly what's going to go on. You know, people are more than happy to do that. But honestly, if we did that with every single patient, every time, a lot of them would just roll their eyes at us. So we kind of need to know what you want so that we can cater to you. That's true. Yes. There's a lot of eye rolling that does go on with some people when you offer too much advice or ask too many questions. So it is a little easier the more open you are with your provider. About what you want. Yep. Yeah, about I think what that's you what want. we can learn about this one because yeah, you have to remember the hospital sees literally everyone, nationalities, cultures, ages. Yeah. Yep, yeah, we, we yep, we do see it all and we don't know. We know what we how we want things, but it doesn't always mean that's how you want it. And it just makes your provider's life a lot easier when you're just open and honest. Yeah. Just tell us. Yeah. And nothing you're going to say is going to shock us. No. (laughs) We've heard it before. Yeah. (laughs) Guarantee it. Whatever you say, we've heard it before. Yeah. Amen. I mean, that's what we should end it on. Whatever you tell us, we've heard it before. (laughs) Exactly. It's true. All right, Chantel. Thanks so much for coming on. All right. Thanks, Hillary. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Like I said in the beginning, don't give in to all the controversy. You know, so many people are like, my nurse forced me to give birth on my back or I had to have cervical exams in labor or I don't want any cervical exams in labor. And when you get to the edges, like all the time or none of the time, it usually just doesn't serve you very well. So hopefully this advice really helped you guys out. Be sure to stay tuned for next week's episode. We are talking about making summer fun for mom. I think often we make summer fun for kids, but let's make it fun for the moms. And if you're interested in more pregnancy information, I have my friend Crystal coming on to talk more about how she got her confident birth in two weeks. Thanks so much for joining us on today's episode. We know you have lots of options for your ears and we are glad that you chose us. We drop episodes weekly and until next time, we hope you have a tangle-free day. Mm